<laughs> hey everybody as you come in what a pleasure all these people i've been so excited and i'm all glammed up because i'm going to a glamorous do later on but it was so exciting i was thinking the winter solstice meeting you there's some of the other speakers here we've got a few of us Nina from Sweden and Nicole from somewhere way up north in the States. Um, I can see some of my friends, my clients. Hello, Lori. Hello, Lindsay. And maybe it would be really nice to see where everybody is from. You know, it would be great to see who's tuning in. I don't expect the Australians. Sam Briatico, who is also a co-host on this, is running something. So in the portal that you've gone into, you'll be able to see her offering for the winter solstice. But let me just find chat and see where you're coming in from. San Francisco, Monty, Monty's here, yay. So Johanna, who's coming here as well, she is actually teaching, but she's in Holland, I believe, or maybe you're not quite in Holland, you're on your way. Hoddesdon, UK, I love it, so specific, Sweden, um iowa and and she is naked in your sauna oh my god we're privileged because there is a thread coming through here of pleasure it's it is the winter solstice but the group of people and the teachings that we're coming from the path to pleasure so we're taking you down this route i just saw sarah hello sarah there's so many of you i want to say hello to if i don't get you it's it's not because I don't see you. So I'm going to open it up by just saying, how many of you actually have experienced the winter solstice as a ritual before? How many? Do you want to just put that in the chat? Be very interesting to see. Hang on, I'm just seeing even more. Yukia, California, and usually from LA. Let's see. So, okay. So Monty has <laughs> experienced ritual with me. Um, Lori is a total ritualist. Sarah hasn't done it yet. And so that looks like quite a few of you haven't maybe experienced it as a ritual. Um, and I'm not even sure that you would have even known some of the teachings to do with it. It is the most ancient, and I'm talking hundreds of thousands of years old, if not millions. Um, it's a festival of light. And because it is the winter solstice and the solar solstices are the access of the masculine. So we are celebrating the masculine as often we do with fire. This is a fire festival. And I'm going to take you through an experience. We're going to have a conversation with some of the other speakers. I'll bring them in. But what I'd also like you to do is get a piece of paper, get a pen, because there will be a point when we're going to use this energy of fire to clear some energy of this previous cycle. Um, I'll give just a few words of what the winter solstice is. So it really is the time when the there is the longest night and our ancestors used to express the longest night and we're talking all throughout Europe other cultures too so I work with indigenous British Irish Scottish heritage that's my background um, but I know that Nina who's in Sweden also you know the Swedes have it's so dark at this time for them. They have like about five hours of light. Britain's a little longer than that, depending upon where you are. And if you're in Australia, you'll be having the summer solstice, which is the shortest night. But we are actually celebrating the energy of the darkest night. And it's not the coldest this year, I have to say. It's not the coldest and it's not even the darkest because it doesn't 
have this one flavor to it. There's always different nuances happening with the winter solstice. But the key thing is um, you are experiencing darkness. You are experiencing shadow. And the shadow is your friend. When we learn to really to really experience the shadow as a space to go, which is the feminine, and we clear the space of the endings of cycles, and we really honor cycles, because I've been speaking recently about what is a good goodbye. A good goodbye is it's one of the most profound things you can do. I would say it with loved ones. I've had moments with, have I said everything to this person before they go? There's that. But there's other things like instinctively knowing when a team member isn't kind of working out. It's like you've gone the course. Maybe it's even a friendship that you are continuing to expand and that person isn't. Or you're just going separate ways. It doesn't even have to be total drama with it, but it can just be this instinct like, mm, you know what? There's an ending here. And today we wanna to honor the endings. So I'm gonna bring in some of the speakers let me add you. So Nicole, all the way from, where are you again? Iowa. No, <laughs> where are you? I never know where you are. I'm in California still, but Northern California, <laughs> so Eureka area. <laughs> Great, Eureka, okay. And Johanneke, where are you? Are you in Holland yet? I'm just in the car. We're just driving through uh, a toll booth from a tunnel. So I'll speak in two minutes. <laughs> okay, cool. And But you look like you're in outer space experiencing the um, the light show at this time of year. And then Nina looks like you're in some also. See, these people are movable parts. This is the team. There's Sam Briatico. And shortly we've got a a man joining the group who is going to take care of a lot of the masculine conversation. And so the Path to Pleasure group are people who are all speaking in different genres about pleasure into your business. And I'm bringing it in because I am so immersed in not only business, but ceremony. So I'm bringing in the ceremony so that you can actually attach it to your life, your business, and do some really profound work today. Um, Nina, do you wanna say hello? Where are you? Hi, I'm in deep, dark Sweden. Uh, <laughs> normally I'm in the countryside, but I'm actually in town. I'm going to do a, a ritual outdoors with lots of people, a fire ritual. Uh, I have my, my part recorded, so it's going to be there. But uh, yeah, it's intense. It's intense. And there's so many people now, I think, talking about the winter solstice. It wasn't a few years ago, but I hear this thing of like happy winter solstice, right, left and center. So that feels really good. Do you, why don't we get you to start because you're on the street in Sweden. Do you want to say a few words about this time of year, what it means to you, a little teaching? Because I know your work is up on the portal and people can go and access it. But do you want to say something all the way from Sweden? Uh, I do, I do. I hope I'm audible because I'm like in a place with lots of traffic. But yeah, to me, uh, I love the dark. And I just told my friend here on my way that I'm almost sad that we're passing the darkest time because it's so yummy. And I, I, I love the coziness and the lit candles and I sleep like a log. And I'm going to talk about that in my recorded presentation to, to realize that there are different kinds of darkness. And the darkness, as you said, is related to the feminine. And that has been rejected in our culture for so many thousands of years. So it's important to find the, the, the good darkness, the nourishing darkness, the rest in the darkness. Uh, and then to separate that out from other kinds of more difficult darkness. And I will do that in my meditation. Uh, but I just love this sense of also celebrating the, the solstices, the equinoxes and the cross-border holidays. I've done that for, for quite a few years and, and I'm starting to feel how time is circular how time is a wheel, the wheel of the year. It's not linear the way we've, we've been taught. Uh, yeah, so that's basically what I have to say right now. I'm also looking forward to your live meditation and all the other speakers. And also I wanna mention, because this is the beginning of the Path to Pleasure summer retreat. So this is the warming up. And I just wanna say, we all met in London uh, in, in October for the, the way forward, which was another kind of retreat 
the same kind of retreat. And it was so pivotal. It was so good. So for everybody, like really to come to Cornwall, because this is this is magic, which hopefully you will proceed during our, our, our meditation, our talk. Yeah. So. I mean, do you want to introduce yourself a little bit as well? Just say who ah. you are. Oh, I forgot that one. Uh, I'm Nina Uderberg, uh, which nobody can pro pro pronounce who is not Swedish. <laughs> I'm a physician uh, who's sort of coming out as a witch. I've been a witch for a long time, but it's in Sweden a bit difficult to be uh, out, be officially a witch and, and a physician. So I everything, uh, and by that I mean a nice, I mean a nice witch, a lovely witch, a white witch who want to help people, but who doesn't believe that the only reality is the one that we can see but that there is also lots of other things uh, and my my um, cont contribution is my long time work as a psychotherapist with trauma and attachment and how you can transform your trauma into pleasure with the help of pleasure lovely thank you darling thank you and Bye. Let's, because I know Johanneke is also uh, in transit, let's bring you on and tell us a few words about your wisdom of the year. Hello. Um, so I've just, I'm just going to say there's a beautiful sun, uh, sunset we've been through in the moment. Moon just comes through, which is beautiful. So I'm um, Johanneke Kodder or Joe which is a lot easier for most of you, um, from Holland originally. And I live in Cornwall in the UK, which is where our beautiful retreat will be. And it's a very magical land. And I am a very experienced doctor, GP. And I have always been interested in more spiritual, spiritual aspects, but more recently have really fully stepped into blending the logical and the conventional part of medicine with the more magical spiritual. Um, so I have a lot of spiritual tricks up my sleeve, so to speak, but which I blend. Um, but I also very passionate about ceremony, um, you know, circles, seasons, and following the rhythms of nature. Um, and I'm, I love this kind of year as well. And particularly now more, as Nina said, more people are aware of the importance of the wintering, the, you know, the um, darkness. And even though it's a hectic time leading up to Christmas, I hear and see more posts about turning inwards. And I have done a recording for, um, for this in the portal, which is, you can access this in the portal which is taking you in on a sensory journey because my um, experience is also to do with the physical body and um, the sensations of the body. And even this time of year, you can use your imagination and your memory to really immerse yourself in your senses, which then gives you a very rich experience of being in the human body, which I think is very important to embrace as we, um, and we want to incorporate pleasure into our daily lives more proactively. And, and the deep sensory experience, I think, is, is very much part of that. So that's me. Yeah, totally with you there. I'm having sensory experiences today. This feeling like, woo, I'm going to a party, get the scent on, you know, excited, feeling dressed up and all of that. And that's that's very much to do with this season as well. Into the darkness comes quite a lot of glamour glamour as in the fairy um, sense, where you cast a glamour, where you cast a new image of yourself, where others will see you in the glamour. And so um, are you actually on the boat now? Uh, no, I'm nearly, we, we, um, we've had a little bumpy ride or a, a ferry crossing. We're already nearly, we're in Holland. We're nearly um, oh. at our destination in about 10, 15 minutes. Oh, great. So, well, have a beautiful one then. You're off the boat. Thank you. And I'll, I'll bring in Nicole. Good morning and good evening, wherever everyone is. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I was curious, um, 
I also, I, there's a recording that I did, but there's also like a little live guided portion. So just let me know when you want to want me to pop in with that. But, um, yeah, my expertise is, well, first and foremost, my name is Nicole Severson. And for those that aren't European, my last name is Norwegian. And a lot of time it's very hard for people to pronounce as well. So I feel you, Nina, <laughs> on that. <laughs> and um, my gift and expertise and what I'm really passionate about is helping people reconnect into their body, their sense of self, their sensuality, especially if they've, um, after they've experienced trauma. And a lot of that for me is tapping them into feeling safe in their body so that they can feel safe in whatever emotion that they're feeling and then learn how to be good with any emotion they're feeling so that they can still take action and feel powerful and use their courage and this is all about tapping into your wild. So our wild self is undomesticated. It isn't bothered with societal conditioning or norms or any of these things. It is the part of us that innately knows. It's the instincts. It's the authenticity. And a huge portion of that is how it ties into our physical expression, whether that's through sensuality or how we dress or our voice. And a big part of that, uh, for me and my healing journey has been around, um, healing the fear of public speaking. <laughs> I used to have huge anxiety attacks before doing yoga classes, which was like so painful because yoga is supposed to be so grounded and Zen and, <laughs> you know, like, and I was like getting tunnel vision, anxiety attacks and blacking out, not remembering what I said. And, uh, it was so painful for me. And it wasn't until I really learned the where's and why of why I was having this response, because it was not what I, I was like, I'm smart, I'm capable, like, what's the problem? And really understanding how trauma affects your body um, in unconscious ways. And uh, my background is right out of high school, about 20 years ago, I went through massage therapy school. I did a therapeutic massage therapy program. And from there, went into different yoga trainings. I've traveled to India and Bali and all over LA for um, yoga trainings and, um, and combined in this somatic experiencing I've studied with Dr. D. Martini. If you know his, he does behavioral work. Um, he's pretty popular in this in Australia too. <laughs> um, and Mama Gina, she's popular in the states. So I've worked with a lot of different people and coaches and retreats over the last uh, twenty years, and have just combined all of the practices that I've used to heal around my own sensuality and sexual expression and my voice. And, um, a big part of that was learning how to regulate my emotions and stop feeling like I was a burden or something to fix or something because I had such big feelings and learning how to really navigate those without putting the stress of them onto other people. And a big part of that is through the body. And my work is also body work based, body based. And, um, yeah, and we'll be diving into some of that really short and easy practice today um, to really move you through that so you can come back into your now, into your present moment, into your wild and really trusting your authentic instincts. And um, yeah. Lovely. Thank you. So what we're up to is we've got a gathering of people who do different kinds of work, but have this, this innate magic between them. And I said that I'm bringing in a man <laughs> i often bring in a man this is not unusual but it's just that there's been such a group of women who have been attached to this particular topic pleasure and so michael walker is joining us next year and he'll actually be on the retreat too a couple of words about the retreat that people are mentioning there is a journey that goes all the way from this moment today right now that is being woven all the way to here, which will be the summer solstice. And we're doing all the work along the ancient festivals. Much of it will be free. So it really is intended to be inclusive, nurturing, wonderful, but some of it is not free. And the retreat at the end of it is 
kind of a masterpiece because what we're working on is this 2024 astrologically after a very tough period of time that we all know we've been having we're going to send out some nice energy today for the world but we know we've had a terrible time since covid really it's been relentless that cycle is ending and the next um year is a harbinger of what new earth really is going to be about and this is not a bummer. This is dark goodness, but none of us are going to be alive for the golden age, right? <laughs> so you don't need to aim high for that. It's not going to happen. All of our manifestations have come in to bring in the energy of the new earth. So we are, bring, we are, we are deep healers, many of us on the planet right now. We've manifested to help birth this new earth which will be at the heart of it made of peace, right? Peace amongst all people, peace within your heart, that you are enough. Peace, peace, peace with the animals, peace with the earth, peace with the whole planet, everything. And 2024 has got this remarkable symbol as part of that, which is on the summer solstice, which is the masculine ultimate fire at its biggest expanse masculine like i am seen i am here for big things i am here nicole for public speaking <laughs> all of that with the full moon on it which is full feminine i am enough i am feeling i am experiencing receiving at such a major level it's like a flow it's like an ocean washing over me and the third night is the alchemical wedding, which is bringing together the energy of the masculine, the feminine, and then the merging of the two. And so we're, I will put a link in later so you know what we're talking about, which is this retreat that's going to be held over the summer solstice. And it's three days and three nights with those themes happening. And that is the energy of, of, of all the goodness that's coming in. And we're striking a little match today, just that little fire to start the process. So my feeling is to, if, if I do the clearing first, Nicole, I have a feeling that's the better way around, that you then follow me or I follow you. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to take you through a journey and allow yourself to get into a comfortable place. If you are sitting on a chair, then uncross your legs and your hands. And then allow yourself to just sink down. If you want at this point to turn off your um, visuals, please do, that's fine. If you don't, no problem, but I will stay visual. I'll pin myself up here. Hang on. So take three deep breaths, really breathing in through the whole of your body. With the legs uncrossed, feel the, the breath coming in as you center yourself. You're breathing it all the way up from your soles of your feet, all the way up through whichever genitals you have, straight into the pelvic bowl. So feel the energy from the earth as you breathe in, straight up into your sexual center, sacral area, lower belly, lower back. And as you breathe out, letting go of the day, of everything that's happened, any concerns, and another breath like that. So deep breath in, and exhale and really make it audible with your mouth 
We want to clear this out. This is a wonderful cleansing time. So another breath like that, breathing in deeply, all the way up into that pelvic bowl. This is the area of creation, of creativity, and we want to clear it, <sighs> breathing it out. And I want to take you back in time to the end of December 2022. So end of last year, find your, find your way back to that place. Remember that you were just coming into a new year and you may have even had resolutions. You may have had dreams and desires. You may have business plans. You may have, you want to bring in a partner. And that was a year ago. So go all the way back to that time and just remember, what were you imagining into the world? What were you dreaming into the world? And continue to breathe. And we're going to let go of December 2022. So take a deep breath in and breathe out December. And then moving into January of this year, January 2023, how are you feeling? What were you doing? Who were you having conversations with? Were there any babies born? Did anybody die? Were you happy? And then gathering up all the energy of January, take a deep breath in and exhale. And then moving into February. Remember, what were you doing at Valentine's Day? Was it one of the colder climates in February? How are you feeling? Did you have inspiration coming through in February? Did you make a decision in February? How was your family? How was your partner? Did you have any plans to travel? Taking a deep breath in. Exhale, February. <sighs> Moving into March. March with its traditional equinox, seed planting season. Did you plant any seeds? How was your business going? Did you travel anywhere? Were you feeling frustrated? Did you fall in love? Were any babies born? Taking a deep breath in. Exhale, march. And we're moving into April now. What was the temperature like in April? 
what was happening on the world stage. Were you happy? Were you feeling that your plans were working out the way you wished? Did you fall in love? Did you want to be in love? How were your family? And taking a deep, deep breath in, exhaling April. And then moving into May, in the ancient festival, this is Beltane, the love season, when all the leaves are burgeoning. What was it like where you were? How are you feeling? Did you travel anywhere? Did you meet anybody exciting? Did you train in anything? Did you feel good in your body? Taking a deep breath in, gather in May. Exhale. Let go of May. And then we move into June. And June was six months ago on the previous summer solstice. Were you traveling in June? Looking back on the year of the six months, did you feel that you'd achieved what you wanted to achieve? Did you feel happy? Did you attend a summer solstice event? Were any babies born? Did anyone die? Did you fall in love? Taking a deep breath in, Exhale, June. And moving into July, that heady summer month. How are you feeling in July? Were you experiencing your life as fun? Did you travel anywhere? Did you go dancing? Did you have a good group of friends around you? How are you feeling? And then taking a deep breath in. Exhale, July. <sighs> Moving into August. lazy month. Did you travel? What was the temperature? What was happening on the world stage? Did you feel rested? Did you take the kids away on holiday? How are you feeling about the autumn? How is your work? How is your health? 
Taking a deep breath in. <sighs> Blowing out August. And then moving into the buzzy month of September. Remembering how it can make you feel like a school kid again. Getting ready for something. Were you feeling excited? Was it going to be an exciting September? Did the kids go back to school and were they happy? Did you attend any retreats? Did you meet up with any interesting group of people? Were you happy? And taking a deep breath in. Exhaling September. And then moving into October. Did you come to the way forward in London? Did you meet fabulous new people? Did you feel happy? Were any babies born? What was happening on the world stage? How was your body? Taking a deep breath in. Exhale, October. <sighs> and then moving into November. Only one month away from this moment. How did you feel in November? Were you satisfied with the work that you'd been doing? Were you satisfied with your sex life? Did anybody die? What was happening on the world stage? Did you attend any ceremonies? Did you travel? How are you feeling in your body? And taking a deep breath in. Exhale, November. <sighs> and moving into early December, as you came into this month, how were you feeling? Were you frustrated? Were you in love? Did you meet any fabulous new friends? Were any babies born? And then starting to reflect now on the whole of the year, the whole of the threading of the ideas that went through this year. Start to notice themes. What were the themes this year that you were dealing with? What was the learning? Was it a tough year? Was it an easy year? What were you meant to learn this year? And then moving that forward, that flow, that river 
of communication from the things that have been to the things that will be, following the flow. What is the theme for the next cycle? If you were to distill it into a sentence or a word, what is the theme for 2024 and the cycle that we step into? After the longest night, the light begins and incrementally becomes brighter and brighter until the summer solstice. So the cycle that you're stepping into that will catch fire and illuminate later, right now, you're distilling it into a spark, tiny, tiny spark. This is not even a seed. This is the spark of light that begins a journey. And then taking three deep breaths, absorbing your theme. Breathe it straight into your sacral chakra, your sexual organs, straight into if you're a woman, a womb, if you're a man, your testicles but into the life force part of you or any energetic representation of that straight into the life force and into this dark space. See it as a dark, dark space, velvety, velvet midnight delicious, falling in, receiving, feel the darkness and expand it to infinity in all directions, imagining it going out like a burst, a starburst in all directions. Now bringing in your word or your sentence into the center of darkness, which is the ultimate feminine. And imagining striking a match and lighting a candle right at the center of this magnificent amplifying darkness and say your sentence or your word over that flame. And then to add to your flame, draw in all the goodness of your heart, all the goodwill you have all the feelings of generosity, generosity towards an elder person, generosity towards an animal person, generosity towards a tree person, generosity towards yourself. And as a symbol of clearing, I'm going to say something triggering and you just respond with the immediate answer in your mind, in your heart. What part of you don't you like? And 
and don't even go into the aftermath of oh but just feel what came up and we're going to take that and take it straight into the void straight to the darkest part where that flicker of a light has been lit and you drop it on the candle and you see the candle burning that up and then feeling love pouring into this space pouring into this beautiful space feeling the love of self the way you would love a sunset or love an animal unquestionably you would just love them so you're just loving you and we send that energy out to the furthest places on the planet that there may be conflict sadness damage doubt frustration rage we send that out and we bring peace 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 to planet earth so now allowing yourself to just rub your hands together generating heat really make it warm like you're warming around that little flame Keeping your eyes shut, place your palms over your closed eyes, breathing in and exhale. And then you're going to rub your hair, your temples, jaw, throat, back of neck, front of throat heart, solar plexus, belly, womb, hips, and then brush it down your legs. And when you feel ready and able, gently coming back into the space So heal, 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 peace, peace, peace. And this really is the energy of this time. It's delicious. There's so much goodwill out there. There's so many good people out there. I know I can depend on you. I know I can depend on you to bring the light to the world, to be the leaders, to be the healers. I have no doubt. So would anybody like to share anything before we go into Nicole's? And what I'm going to share is I'm going to put the link up in the, in the uh, chat right now of the Path to Pleasure retreat at the summer solstice, because some of you might like to come. And I would love to see all of you there. It's going to be a bit of a, a once in a lifetime time so let me bring in all the rituals i do that it's like i keep thinking there's going to be another one that you know somehow is the same and they're never 
ever the same. They're always totally glowingly different. But my feeling about this one, it's um, a ceremonial experience of three days all around pleasure. And um, the only thing I'll be doing at it that is directly linked to pleasure is I'll be running all the ceremonies. That's my job. But I will be doing a little chat about aphrodisiacs because oh and i prepared one earlier <laughs> here's a little aphrodisiac so i'll be talking about this i launched this product called the queen's pleasure it has a yoni on it as you can see and it's an arousal oil and i the the retreat is not really like a tantric experience or anything like that we're not like hey but there will be some <laughs> ecstatic dance um and I want to give you access to trying an aphrodisiac. And so I'm going to ask Nicole to unmute, come in. I always love your guided meditation. So thank you. That was really, really powerful. Excellent. So with that, I'd love for us to just take a few breaths together to kind of clear that space and drop in here. So taking an inhale in through your nose and then exhaling out and then taking another inhale in through your nose, exhaling out and then inhaling in through your nose and exhaling out. So as we drop into this practice, I want to start by saying anything that I say or that uh, you hear uh, through this practice, if you feel something awaken or activate or get triggered in your body through this practice, I want it to uh, just open the space for you to drop in. <laughs> so as we're going inward, just noticing, does this feel true for me? What is this awaken in me? What does it turn off or turn on in me? And the first thing I'll say with this is that feelings are not facts. So while we have feelings and they are feedback and we feel them, they're not necessarily facts as we <laughs> can see factual things or um, um, in the reality of others, right? If they're not feeling what you're feeling, it's not a fact for them kind of a thing. So first and foremost is this feelings aren't facts and they are a sensory feedback and that our bodies use. It's the language of our bodies to communicate with our mind. So we, our mind uses language and um, optical things to kind of process information, whereas our body has all these different sensory systems, right? Through taste, touch, smell, spiritual sense of knowing something that we couldn't possibly have known mentally. And the, the turn on or turn off of our nervous system, whether we're in survival mode or in the present moment. So as we drop into these two feelings, I want you with your pen and paper to write the one feeling, you can write down, the feeling or emotion that you have the hardest time feeling. So this is like whatever bad emotion, what you, you know, consider bad, <laughs> the one that you consider for you to be the heart. So this could be, this could be anger. It could be grief. It could be jealousy, envy. Um, it could be um, boredom, whatever it is for you of what is, um, or shame, right? That's a common one. What's the hardest feeling that when you feel it, you either try to avoid it or numb it, or <laughs> um, it takes you out, like, right? It can trigger you into online shopping or overeating or um, getting down on yourself. If you feel comfortable, go ahead and pop it in the chat if you wanna share. And the second, I want you to write the hardest good emotion for you. So it could be pleasure, right? And I want to speak to pleasure too, where 
our sensation of pleasure is this sense of um well-being so i know a lot of the time when people hear the word pleasure they just automatically think sexuality or sexual pleasure but the pleasure is a state of being and it's an experience so we can find pleasure in looking at a sunset you can find pleasure in getting a really great hug from someone you love you can find pleasure in eating a bowl of pasta in italy you know there's all these different ways in which we can experience pleasure but it's a feeling state so What happens, especially if you've had trauma or different experiences um, throughout your life where when you experience something pleasurable, you actually try to avoid it because you're like, I'm going to lose that feeling or I'm going to lose the thing. Um, This is where Brene Brown talks a lot about this and avoiding joy. It's like you're foreboding joy because your, your fear of on the other side of that of losing it or not having it or being able to maintain it. And a lot of my clients have a hard time maintaining a sense of pleasure in their life because they're like, well, if I feel that good, I'm going to lose it. Or if I, (laughs) if I feel that good, then people are going to reject me or my family is going to think something's wrong with me. So whatever emotion, um, you good emotion that you feel like is the hardest for you, go ahead and write it down and then also pop it in the chat if you feel comfortable. Yeah. So freedom can feel scary because, um, when we don't have, um, all these constraints that can feel very much ungrounded or like what's going to happen next, that sense of unknown and that triggers our brain to want to go into, survival mode, right? When there's an unknown, it's unsafe. And that's a big reason a lot of people don't go for their dreams or for pleasure because it's an unknown. And so that can feel scary to someone's body. So part of these practices is going to help you feel safe in your pleasure. (laughs) Because if you have had experience where you weren't safe in your pleasure, maybe you got scolded for singing or being too loud or laughing or Um, you had sexual abuse where pleasure was confusing and there was things that happened to you. And so it's like this weird thing that happens in your body. Um, so this learning how to feel safe in any of these emotions, good or bad, or how we perceive them allows us to not be run by the emotions and the emotions are your subconscious, right? So your emotional people, or always like, I'm a rational thinker and I make decisions rationally. And it's like, bullshit. <laughs> Everything's run by your, your subconscious. Your unconscious mind is run by emotions because that's our lizard brain. That's the limbic system that's run by our sensory states, by our emotions. Because if you're getting chased by a tiger or, you know, more primally or old ways our body kept us, you know, the, these berries taste good. These berries are bitter and can kill me. Your body remembers these things. And it's in a way that you don't even have to think about it, like breathing. And what happens in modern day society is we have a lot of perceived uh, triggers or perceived attacks or perceived things of, oh, if my boss doesn't like me, I'm going to get fired. And it's, it triggers this survival state. So what I'd like to um, to kind of try and keep it like succinct because <laughs> I could go on and on and on about a lot of the science of this, which I love that there's a lot of um, science based um, people in this program too, because um, I like as much as I love the magic and the woo, I love the facts of science or studying the body and the mind and how they, and how they actually relate. So in this practice, what I'd like for all of us to do is um, you can go ahead and get comfortable. If you want to close your eyes, go ahead. Otherwise, just keep your gaze kind of more soft and down towards your legs, or you can close your eyes. And this practice I'm going to walk us through is just showing you how you can start to feel your emotions with without the trigger of like the trauma, you know, the thing in the moment, just to start teaching your body how to feel safe feeling. So you can start to identify when you're feeling something and thinking something and observing it. So it kind of gives you this more um, anchored core sense of self. So as you breathe here, I just want you to notice how your body feels in this moment in this spaciousness of receiving, of being open, noticing the soles of your feet, the palms of your hands, the crown of your head. 
And as you breathe here, you can notice if you can feel your heart beat, the pulse of your own body. And as you breathe here, I want you to bring that bad, worst, first emotion we listed. And not as to relive it, but I want you just to bring in that emotion or even your aversion to it. And I want you to notice where and how you feel it in your body. Does it come up through your belly, your chest, or your head? Noticing if it causes anxiousness, flighty, fuzzy, or tight feelings. Just noticing and observing it, kind of like you're being curious about it. Like, what are you? Without getting hooked in, without fearing it, just noticing it. How does it reside? How does it conjure up in your body? And as you breathe here, as if you are talking to that emotion in your own head, or if you want to say it out loud, just saying, it is safe for you to be in my body. As if you're saying it to this emotion, I know it sounds a little weird, but just allowing yourself to have this dialogue with this feedback your body is giving you. So it is safe for me to feel you in my body. It is safe for me to feel you. Noticing if how it feels in your body shifts or if there's just this kind of self meets self feeling. And as you breathe here, I just want you to also notice as you're just creating the sense of safety of just feeling this emotion without trying to run from it, without trying to avoid it or make it better or fix it. And just notice if there's any stories attached to this feeling. Any situations, old identities. As if it's like a movie that plays itself out. Just noticing if there's any meanings or stories attached to the feeling. Any images that come up in your head. And then as you breathe here, taking an inhale in through your nose. As you exhale, releasing it out your mouth. And just allowing this feeling to exhale out as you breathe, so as you inhale in. Exhaling out, letting it go. Noticing your body's desire to attach <laughs> to the feeling because it's it feels normal or it's used to it. And inhaling in again. And exhaling out. So allowing yourself to shake it off if you physically want to shake out your hands or your shoulders or roll out your head or move your jaw, just allow yourself to shake it out and just noticing where your body is so used to that feeling state and so used to hooking in where it actually becomes like a whole dopamine cycle that can happen almost like an addiction that we can, we can hook into within our own bodies. And so, because I don't want to leave you in that, we're going to then go into the good feeling. So the feeling that um, you desire to feel. So as we set an intention for moving forward um, with Anara, maybe even using that as um, your base, but I want you to move into a feeling that even if it's harder for you, it's something you really aspire to. So I know for a lot of people, it's happiness or joy, bliss, pleasure. This, this feeling state of when I become an actress and rich and famous, then I'll be, then I'll feel. When I have the partner and the babies and the life, then I'll feel. I want you to pull that emotion. And as we breathe here, usually this one is can be easier, sometimes harder for people to tap into. But I want you to notice where and how you feel that emotion in your body. 
when you tap into this, when I get there, then I'll feel. You might notice a lightness, a lift in your chest or your heart. You might notice buzzing. Noticing where and how you feel that in your body. And as we breathe here, I want you to breathe life into it. So every, every inhale, you're breathing into your pelvic bowl, the soles of your feet, the palms of your hands, into every cell of your body, breathing in that state of, ah, yes, <laughs> that yes feeling. And with every exhale, noticing how your bones, your body, your physical self holds that container. And so your breath is breathing life and breathing it into your cells. So you don't have to grip it or grasp it or try and hang on to it. Your body has that felt sense. So with every inhale, you're breathing it into your cells. You're making cellular memories of that feeling. And with every exhale, you're just allowing that to maintain in between breaths. So you don't have to grip it. You don't have to grasp it. It's just there. And as you continue to breathe here, expanding it from just one part of your body into every cell of your body. If you feel yourself trying to grasp at it or trying to maintain it, just allow your breath to move it through. And taking just a few more breaths here, taking an inhale in through your nose and exhaling out your mouth. And two more like this at your own pace as you inhale in through your nose, exhaling out. And then last one together as you inhale in at your own pace and then exhaling out. So as you let this felt sense, this sense of safety, this sense of presence, this sense of pleasure, I just want you to notice how easily your mind can take you to both places, either the pain state or the pleasure state, and how your mind and your breath can actually truly bring you into the present moment through your own presence of self. So if you'd like, you can pop in the chat anything that came up for you around that or any questions you have. And I know this was kind of like a quick practice, but that's on purpose. <laughs> uh, but I really, really, the work that I do at the core is this, um, the feeling states, right? The feeling of pleasure, the feeling of safety, and really using your feelings as feedback because it's how your body speaks in sensation of pain or pleasure to let you know how you're thinking, how you're acting, and if it's in alignment, if it feels authentic. And so instead of fearing the bad feelings or fearing the pain is this ability to hold and honor all of it. And that's part of the shadow work or going into the darkness is, can I be with this? Can I, is it safe for me to feel in my body? Is it, and even if I don't like what I'm feeling, is it safe for me to witness and honor it? in a way where it's giving me feedback and it's speaking to me in a way that I know my own language with my body and how that applies in with intimacy and in relationships and sexuality in your business, um, in your voice, I know for me has been life-changing. So this is the work and um, I'll just check to make sure there's not any questions. But after the first exercise, when we finished, I gave a massive yawn, which yeah, after the second exercise upon finishing, I felt so much lighter overall. Yeah. And that's where our body. So you might notice when you've done energy work or meditation or yoga or things like this, if your body starts yawning or sometimes people get really spaced out, <laughs> it's like they can't actually like let it land. Um, these are 
ways in which our body uh, still is in this like avoidance, right? Of like, um, whether it's information or conversations or different things where our body still tries to, um, in a patterning, um, whether it's receiving the information or releasing old information, um, our bodies kind of have that. So yawning a lot of the time can be like letting go of old things. I find that in a lot of this, it's like an old, like your body's like, oh, <laughs> like let it go. So I'm um, just honoring that too, just and learning and really tapping into what it means for you and not over intellectualizing it, but just like, oh, that felt good. Or I wonder what that meant or <laughs> getting curious. So um, Anara, I'd love to bring you back in and um, share any thoughts or anything else um, anyone wants to share. <clears throat> That was powerful, really powerful. I, I got quite a, an insight into the jealousy thing because it's not something I feel a lot. You know, like, you know, we always joke about the sort of Mediterranean, like jealousy and everything is like passionate all the time, you know, and uh, and the, the English and the Europeans and the Swedes can be sort of more cool about it. But I did have this guy who I was deeply in love with and he never, never honored me as like, hey, you're, you know, amazing. There was always these little edges of I was not invited to places. And I so wanted to be part of the family, you know, it was like that. And the jealousy that I felt then was so like sticky, hideous feeling like I just felt so uncomfortable in my own body. And so I don't have a lot of practice with it, you know what I mean? But I went back to that moment really experienced it big time and i was able to transmute something it was quite amazing because this is 20 years ago that experience with that person and still it was like i got of scared of jealousy because it's so hideous feeling um and i never want to go near it and maybe that's also i protect myself a little bit you know i don't want to I haven't met the man of my dreams yet, but I'm a bit scared that he could bring me back to that jealous state. It was profound. Mm. Oh, so powerful. I would love to add something to that. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Um, Cause I know jealousy is one of the, like the icky ones, right? <laughs> um, jealousy was something like, really, really hard. That's one of mine. And um, when I did these practices for myself was, um, at the core of jealousy is abandonment. It's the oh, fear of abandonment. Yeah. And so um, because there's such a taboo around jealousy, you know, it's like all the cool, like I was always so, <laughs> I was always so jealous of my friends are like, I don't get jealous. And I'm like, how, like, how do you do that? Like, it was so embarrassing. And it does not bring out the best character for me. And like, <laughs> but at the core is this fear of abandonment. So it's not even about who they're going to fall in love with or, you know, not being invited to like the thing, but it's this, I'm, I'm not being seen these. It's an actual abandonment and a fear of lack of love. So I don't know if that helps too, but like, I know for me that this was a huge, you know, and I have Scorpio and like four planets for me. So like, <laughs> it runs deep. Scorpio <laughs> rising. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm sure there's a lot of Scorpio at play right now. <laughs> <laughs> so and it's again this ability can I instead of looking to the person I'm feeling jealous of to fix it or to make me feel better or to make you know like to know that I trust them and have that conversation it's like can I be with this emotion in myself first and really sit with it in a way where it's like even if I fucking hate it and it feels icky and I wish I didn't feel this way it's like can I honor it and feel safe to be with it and that's where the shift happens and that's where we don't self abandon because there's a lot of self abandoning that happens and and not wanting to feel bad feelings and so really none of your feelings are bad they're just they're information and it's how your body speaks and the bad ones are loud <laughs> And that's how in survival mode, you know, if there's a bad pain, whatever feeling to evacuate a bad situation, it's kept us alive. So it's stronger in some ways than a pleasure. So um, this, again, is an invitation to really be okay and sit with those feelings. So thank you, Anara, for sharing that. 
Well, I was going to say that I think we should um, start to round it up, wrap it up and honor the time that we've done together. But there was, have you got anything else that you'd like to say, Nico? Uh, nope, just thank you. And um, it was a pleasure to to hold that space. So thank you. Yeah, to totally amazing being with everybody. Um, so I wanted to bring you back to the, the, the pieces that you may have picked up today, which were the things that you want to let go of in this cycle. And I said there was a little bit of a fire ceremony and because Americans love, like, I'm going to sue you. I'm going to say, be very, very careful where you burn this piece of paper. <laughs> Don't burn it in, burn it in a sink, whatever you do, but you're going to write down some of the things that you want to let go of in this cycle. And some of them will be like it's at an end you know it's a good ending it's yes that's i'm complete and some of them will be oh you know somebody betrayed me in this you know it might be as strong as that this year and i'm putting an end to that and something that i notice with with clients so this might help some business leaders out there is I still find myself, if I've had a lot of deep involvement with a client who wants to come in and then doesn't, I'm a bit like, <laughs> you know, what's going on here? What happened? What, you know, where's the, and I'm learning more and more to trust it, but I want to be over the conversation in my mind very quickly about that. Like they either come, they go, it's, it's like that. So that mechanism, that I am aware of with myself. If you have one of those mechanisms that you want to, you know, it's time to go <laughs> uh, where you're elevating yourself in increments in methodology as well. You know, how are you getting better at your craft? How are you doing that? Just let those things go. If there's a member of a team who is not fitting in anymore, let them go. If there's a habit, you want to get rid of let it go and you can carry on after this experience to get the full weight of it because actually the uh, the winter solstice is tomorrow traditionally the tradition i follow we always have dates like it's the 21st it's the eve of something um the spiritual path i follow which is the high priestess of avalon we always look at eaves. So Beltane is Beltane Eve. It's May Eve. It's, you know, Midsummer Night's Eve. It's Winter Solstice Eve, Midwinter. So you, you're you looking at the Eve transition because it's the more potent power it has building. So we're doing the build right now, but actually tomorrow is you could keep it till then and burn it then. But I have I've written my little piece of paper and what I'm going to do is just light. Actually, there's one other thing. Hold up. I want to just give you a traditional, a really super traditional blessing. So this is a blessing to, uh, in Britain, we're really into mistletoe, which grows in trees and balls and bundles. So here's the mistletoe. I'm going to kiss you under the mistletoe. That's the tradition. Kiss somebody. I'll kiss my cat who's right here under the mistletoe. So, and it was a fertility, right? It's actually a lover's right. It's a fertility, right? Somebody told me once, and I'm not sure about this, but the Druids believe that the balls, the, um, the seeds, which have got these fleshy white bits, when you squish them, they're a bit like semen. And so therefore it's meant to be like a fertility. It's like a male. It was definitely a masculine um, blessing. So it squeezes its juices on you. So that, and then I'm going to do this with all of us. So if we just take a breath, shut our eyes for a moment. And then I'm going to light the solstice candle with you. So just open your eyes. And we're going to bring in the new cycle together. So here is the new cycle. Many, 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 many blessings upon you. Many blessings upon the planet. Many blessings in Gaza. 
may peace reign and again if you look in the um the the chat you can see the the path to pleasure summer solstice what the actual you know experience will be we'd love to have you there there'll be a whole bunch of people but in the meantime i want to just say this that the next event which will be free there's a very auspicious date in january which is the first new moon of the year because new moons govern beginnings and so it's on january the 11th and it will be at 11 a.m uk so there will be a recording for anybody who cannot be there but we will do it at that time to hit the actual 11 is the number of mastery the day 11 at 11 with this new moon is going to send off some amazing like plans seal them so if you want to do anything on business or pleasure or partnership or whatever we'll send you out information about that in the meantime so much love have amazing, amazing blessings over this season. Mwah. Love you all. Pleasure, Sophia. <laughs> I don't think we've met. Have we met? No, it's, it's amazing to meet you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, people. I'll see you soon. <laughs>